Uh, hello and welcome to another uh, on-base baseball video. And uh, my name is Brian Hafferkamp. I'm the designer and creator of on-base baseball. And in this video, I just wanted to sort of do a quick video showing you what I've been working on <clears throat> here lately. It's a, a new game concept. And you can see the cards here. Um, you can see how big they are in my hand. Pretty, pretty good sized card. Easy to read <clears throat> and also color coded on top of that. So uh, you can see we have uh, several players here. And I'm trying to figure out how to put these into the spreadsheet easily. <laughs> so uh, they're mostly like the best players. You know, I started from the best players and sort of it's an all star team, really. And there's several. Others over here, Mookie Betts and Schmidt and Goldschmidt and Machado, you know, they're some of the best players in the league. Uh, but essentially what you're doing is you've got uh, three dice, three D6s. Uh, one should be a different color. This one is also numbered as opposed to dots. And um, then the other two can be the same you're going to be rolling them together most of the time but basically uh, you have uh, the first die the colored die decides uh, batter or pitcher it's going to be uh, maybe a 50 50 game maybe something a little more skewed like maybe we can do if it's a certain kind of pitcher um, maybe a 60 40 in his favor as opposed to just a straight up 50 50 we'll see um, anyway, this is the decide, the first die to decide <laughs> who controls the at bat. And then with these two, you're going to uh, roll, add them together, and get a number between 2 and 12. So, um, some unique things about this game is it's, it's based off of the uh, situations of the game. So with the bases empty, you're going to use either the left or the right hand. So versus pitching, Garrett Cole pitching versus left-handers, right-handers. Uh, when he has men on, pitching versus left and right-handers. When Soto's batting, this is against a left-handed pitcher with the bases empty. Against a right-handed pitcher with the bases empty. So against Garrett Cole, he would be batting out of these right-hand columns. Uh, they are, um, how did I derive these stats? Uh, I got these stats based off of sabermetric uh, batted ball statistics. So you can actually dig down if you go into, I use, I like to use fan graphs, but uh, you can dig down into um, what did a guy do against left-handers with the bases empty. Uh, you can even do it on sunny days in domes. <laughs> There's all kinds of like crazy splits that you can do uh, but just using sort of um, not just left right splits but left right plus situational splits uh, we can have these really interesting things that are going on and so based off of those numbers and some formulas that I just created out of those the, some of it's the raw data some of it is uh, actual batted ball statistics like line drive percentage fly ball ground ball percentage and pull center and opposite field so we sort of have uh, horizontal direction and um, you know three-dimensional direction whether it's on the ground or in the air <clears throat> uh, and then put it into this grid so basically you know for any particular at bat you might be looking at these two here so that might be uh, you know with nobody on starting an inning you're gonna have bases empty but as soon as someone gets on base now you're gonna be looking at the uh, column with the men on so the runner at first base that's a man on base uh, as soon as a batter gets or a runner gets to second or third base then you're gonna use the in scoring position um, columns and then if the bases are loaded which you know doesn't happen that often but you can see here, uh, this is the bases loaded uh, for each of them. So against lefties and righties, you know, uh, 
how did he do? So interesting things here, red, pink, red. <laughs> it's really, it's like light red. Uh, so red is K, so you can see, um, and then starting at two and going to 12, these are your least, these are your least probable rolls. Uh, so when you're adding uh, 2D6s together, uh, these are going to be your least probable rolls. It's least probable to roll a 2. There's only one way to roll a 2 and only one way to roll a 6 or a 12. Uh, as you go through here, there are multiple ways to roll these, with 7 being the most common uh, roll that you can have with 2D6s. So uh, you can look through here and you can see the most common things that are going to happen um, with each player. Uh, so he's got quite a few K's through here and all through this middle section those are going to be five to eight five to nine those are going to be your most common rolls so anything through this middle section uh, you can kind of get a good idea of what sort of player this player is uh, you can see here he's not if he is in control he's not uh, striking out a lot until you get runners in scoring position or the bases loaded and then he strikes out quite a bit but over here not a lot of strikeouts uh, a lot of grounders <clears throat> and um, he does walk a lot but uh, it's not a huge chance on every roll he does hit home runs and those mostly stay out to the edges same over here he's giving up home runs but mostly those are staying out to the edges now if you look at a player like Aaron Judge you look at him next to Juan Soto, you can see here the judge, he, he crushes the ball, doesn't matter people on base or not, this is 2022, so obviously this is his uh, most recent 62 home run season. Um, but also through the middle, he's got a ton of Ks, so he's the most of the things that he's doing uh, throughout the game are gonna be striking out or hitting bombs, that's sort of <laughs> the modern player. Um, but you can see that Soto is a little bit more evenly balanced. He's uh, he's making a lot more contact. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of contact through here, but those are all in sort of the lower uh, the lower probability uh, cells. But here, you know, Soto's making a lot of contact, um, just not not as much of the home run or nothing type of player. Uh, so it's kind of cool. You can see, um, let's judge twice. Huh? You can see uh, how these players, uh, how these players fare against one another. Now I've I've, I've resorted to um, so initially I had like a Rizzo. I had Rizzo and judge these are sort of my initial players now you can see they're different they're not the same i was actually going through each individual player and doing figuring out the calculations for all of these and uh, i would be retired before i finished a whole season doing it like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to break it down into uh, levels of uh, woba so weighted on base average uh, which takes into account, uh, you know, it's sort of a total offensive number um, as far as batting is concerned. So we have guys like uh, Judge who are, um, let's see, Judge, Trout, Team. Yes, Judge Trout, uh, Alvarez, Jordan Alvarez, and Goldschmidt. So Goldie, as he's called. So these are your four, four hundred plus uh, player Woba hitters from this last year, and you can see. They all have the same. Oops. 
actually. This must be the one. So you can see that they they all have the same. Uh, this was this was an older one, but you can see uh, next to it's been evened out just a little bit more. Uh, included a lot more walks in there um, sort of than I had before so I spread out the results a little bit but uh, what I did was I took an average of these players um, and then based on that average uh, came up with sort of a, a top-line player uh, I made sure that any player that I used had at least a hundred at bats and so these guys all had at least 100 at bats. Matt Carpenter also did, but his um, he was kind of skewing the numbers a little bit, so I removed him. Uh, but he also would have uh, something. He would also have a 400 plus Woba. So um, just a little uh, side note there, and then you know I might have to do a little bit of tink individual tinkering or something like that, uh, just to make sure that any anomalies are covered. If there's a high woba guy who doesn't have a ton of home runs or uh, somebody with more home runs, maybe I have to just adjust these a little bit. <clears throat> um, but generally, you know, this is sort of what I do with on base baseball. Um, so this this game is really just a it's a mixture of on base and on base advanced and uh stratomatic i guess it's really you know this is a very similar concept to stratomatic uh but then i put a real uh strat a sabermetric sort of twist to it so uh we have the batted ball stats and then as far as pitchers are concerned uh pitchers have the same thing so um all these other guys, these guys are all 370 to 400. So this is sort of the next tier down. Um, I guess I can show you that. So these guys are sort of the next tier down. You can see them uh, compared with one another. A lot more walks. A lot more contact, generally. Uh, fewer hits. I think you can just kind of see that there are fewer hits, especially with the bases empty. You know, these uh, 400 plus guys were, they're just killing it with the bases um, empty. I mean, four, four out of 11 slots is, uh, it's like a 365 average or something like that. So uh, the more green that you have in the column, the higher the batting average for that column. Uh, so you can see that they're hitting well here around 300. Uh, there's no, <clears throat> there's no like super duper column, but over here you've got guys, you know, there's four here, there are four here, <laughs> uh, four, four in almost every column. Uh, you know, they're all hitting almost 400 you know, in all these different situations. And individually, they might be hitting down around 250 or something in a, a particular situation, but uh, collectively they're hitting in that 270 to 300 uh, range almost every situation. In some situations, obviously, um, yeah, some situations, especially against left-handers, crushing left-handers. So uh, it's kind of a cool way to be able to visualize uh, how good a player is or, or where a player is. Uh, but this will be Altuve and um, Freddie Freeman. I just went with team colors here. So you don't see them all together because there aren't very many teammates. There are a few teammates. but So Cole and, Cole and Judge are teammates. So you would have obviously similar coloring. And um, you can see through here a lot of singles, so a lot of contact being made uh, from this group. Again, this is uh, 370 Woba all the way up to 400, and then the other group is 400 plus. So um, it's not a, a, a huge group of them, a uh, much larger group of players there uh, than the 400 plus. And then, you know, they just sort of 
like a bell curve, right? It gets sort of fat in the middle with the average players. And then we got uh, two pitchers here. I did these both of these guys by hand. I haven't done any of the pitchers by um, by doing any of the formulas or anything like that. So you can see that very well, but. Uh, So oh, these are two pitchers, Clay Holmes and uh, Garrett Cole, so both Yankees. <clears throat> no special reason to choose the Yankees, just I don't know why. <laughs> no special reason. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I had some, uh, you know, good players who played and um, that they had enough statistics, at least at the beginning, to put these cards together. But these were both done by hand. And I'll have to go back and figure out, you know, what is a, uh, what's a low FIP or low Sierra pitcher. And, um, we'll work off that. But you can see he, he does give up, uh, uh, his fair share of hits, but he's, he's also striking out guys all over the place. Uh, when he gets the bases loaded, he tends to walk people, um, which is not great. And, um, over here, Clay Holmes is hitting everybody and their mother's uncle. Look at all these hit by pitches. <laughs> so, he, uh, a little bit of a control issue. Um, but also strikes out. Look at this. He's got four strikeouts out of 11. So, I don't know, whatever that is. It's more than a 36% K percentage, uh, with the bases loaded. So, he's either striking you out or he's hitting you. So that's kind of Clay Holmes' game, I guess. Um, anyway, this is, uh, again, you can sort of get a visual of um, the player, and you can kind of see visual what, visually what kind of player he is. Uh, I've gone through, and, and you can't see it on here because I haven't printed them yet, but I'm, I'm going through and adding uh, statistics or values for base running, uh, stolen bases, and grounded into double plays. Uh, there will be um, errors, so basically a fielding uh, type of rating, and then an arm. Excuse me, and those are those are very similar to what we did with the on base advanced, uh, where you have some different ratings. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to do a catcher, a proper catcher rating. Um, I think steals will just be off of the runner uh, taking extra bases. Uh, I have to figure out a way to work arms with the speed or the base running value. So there'll be a, a separate base running value, stolen base, and grounded into double plays. So uh, you'll be able to determine on a ground ball, did this player hit into a double play or not? That'll be um, in just an extra roll. I, I don't think there'll be a lot of extra rolls in this game. Uh, only if you want to do something like steal a base or take an extra base. Um or if you have to do an error check uh, for some reason. <clears throat> so, should be interesting to see how this develops. Um, no name, just a concept. Uh, I just wanted to, to kind of piggyback off of Stratomatic and see if we could maybe bring Strat into the Sabermetric universe a little bit. And uh, what would that look like and uh, how could we do that? And uh, these cards are colorful which is cool. I don't do a ton of color, but, uh, it's, it's cool to do that. And, and I wanted to use the color because it's functional. You know, I don't, I'm not a big fan of doing color. Um, that's not functional because it just wastes your ink. And I know that it looks good, but, uh, ultimately you can play the same game with uh, black and white cards and it costs you less if you want to have the game printed at a place uh, to do professional printing and cutting. So, <clears throat> uh, just trying to think about the end user and, and the gamer and, uh, what that would, if we need spot color to use spot color, if you don't need it, uh, to not use it because it is, it can be expensive, uh, to do spot color like that. All right. And, uh, played a couple of games. Let's see here. This is uh, the game I just finished, 5 nothing, Team A over Team B. Um, Altuve had a home run, Freeman had a home run, and Soto 
at a home run. Uh, so that was two, four, um, five. So that's all the five runs <laughs> off of home runs. A um, couple hits for Judge and a couple hits for Soto. Uh, when you come down here, not a lot going on. This was uh, Garrett Cole pitched against these guys and Holmes pitched against these guys. Holmes, definitely the better pitcher in this game so far uh, as he's dominated both of the games that I've played. Um, not a lot going on down here, but I played a, another initial game. And this initial game was 6-1 uh, Team B. Um, so I switched the pitchers. So Cole was pitching against uh, the bottom team the first game. <laughs> Holmes was pitching against the top team. Nine innings, six hits, only one run, seven Ks. So um, Garrett Cole did have 12 Ks. He did have a lot of strikeouts over nine innings, but he also gave up the... 11 hits and 6 runs. Uh, he gave up 2 jacks just to Mookie Betts. Betts was 4 for 5. Um, it was a big 2 run single by J.D. Davis uh, here. Kind of put him way out ahead. And then uh, this 2 run home run is here and that's you know, sort of put the game away. Uh, Otani did hit a home run off of uh, Holmes, and that was the only runs uh, for them. So, as I play the game, it, it feels good, it feels right. Uh, everything is coming out really well, and um, I'm just going to continue to work on it, dink around with it, and see uh, if I can automate the process a little bit. Uh, that way, uh, it'll be a little bit easier to sort of dump the players and then. Uh, get them onto the cards. I think uh, the card process pretty well figured out. Um, someone had given me some help on Quick Pitch with the way that I was setting up my spreadsheet, so that's uh, super helpful uh, to be able to have that and uh, makes the card creation process a lot faster. So now I just need to go through and create uh, sort of templates uh, for each of the different hitters, right handed and left handed. Uh, for each uh, level, each hitting level. So I got two levels done, and I think that I'm probably going to have five or six total. So uh, trying to get a little bit more differentiation there uh, so that it's not just a couple, two or three different levels of player, um, and you get too many of them bunched together. I'm hoping to bunch fewer players together, which should give me more accurate statistics. So uh, hopefully. The game turns out well. If you get any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section. Um, if just looking at this, you have some ideas. The game is literally at the beginning stages. I just started on this this week. So, um, yeah, it's the very beginning stages of, of thinking about uh, what would a game like this look like and, and how can we sort of push Stratomatic into the new saber metric world and um, it's not stratomatic per se but it's just it's still based upon you know very similar concepts but it's also bringing in some other concepts that i've already laid out in on base baseball and uh, on base advance so uh, kind of excited and i think just by looking at the cards people are going to be interested but uh, the gameplay is super fast you know just like strat basic and uh, we'll see what we can do to to bring in some extra gameplay type scenarios and situations. Um, but there's a lot of things on the cards right now uh, that will, you know, you'll be able to use it. It's kind of almost a narrative format, uh, just like Strat. It's kind of a narrative format on the cards. Um, so hopefully uh, this will turn out to be uh, well, good, and well received. <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully it just gets finished most of the time is what I'm thinking. Uh, but I'll keep you posted on any updates uh, for this as it goes along and, and have some demos for people to play uh, hopefully pretty soon. Alright, if you haven't subscribed, please click on the subscribe button and uh, if you click the bell icon, then you'll be notified of new videos when I post them. Uh, I'll be working on some new things for on-base 
baseball so the projection season will be coming in just a few months um, spring training is already around the corner first snow today first real snow in Chicago and um, spring training we're already looking forward to it so um, I think that's it uh, if you haven't checked out quick pitch uh, baseball go to quickpitchgame.com this is my newest full baseball game and uh, being well received I think uh, people are enjoying it who are playing it just uh, need to get more people playing it so um, would love to hear your feedback on the game everything that I've heard so far is very positive it's sort of a different take on tabletop baseball flipping the tables uh, in some ways so every outcome comes off the pitcher card uh, the hitter is involved but not as involved as like this sort of system so uh, go check that out quickpitchgame.com I think you'll find the price just right and uh, give you a chance to go try it out uh, it's got lots of cards <laughs> it's a real cards and dice game and uh, lots of players seven or eight hundred players been on the uh, on the set that you download. Okie doke. I think that's it for me. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.